morning. Okay, so we are here on a new week, and let's see, we had a great weekend. I had a great weekend. I hope you had a great weekend. Um, we are going to be in numbers. We finished uh, Genesis, we finished Exodus, and now we finished Leviticus, and now we're into numbers. Now, I know a lot of you just skip right on over numbers because you think that's not important. I don't need to know those numbers. But um, good morning, Elena. Glad that you're here. Every book of the Bible is important. Every word in God's uh, word is true and is there for a reason and a purpose. So we go through the Bible to be able to gain what we we could from whatever God is giving us that day, okay? So let's go ahead and go to him in prayer and get into the word. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you care about us. We thank you that you give us your word to speak to our hearts and minds. And Lord, help us to understand what you have for us today. Help us to trust you with all things. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for when I fail and when I fall short. Lord, forgive me for not being who you've called me to be and help me to change, help me to be more like you, help me to use every moment to your honor and glory. And I just thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So again, we're in numbers two and three, um, and we're talking about the arrangement of the camp. So the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, The people of Israel shall camp each by his own standard with the banners of their father's houses. They shall camp facing the tent of meeting on every side. Those to camp on the east side toward the sunrise shall be of the standard of the camp of Judah by their companies, the chief of the people of Judah being Nishan, the son of Amminadab, his company as listed being 74,600. Those to camp next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar, the chief of the people of Issachar being Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, his company as listed being 54,400. Then the tribe of Zebulun, the chief of the people of Zebulun being Eliab, the son of Helion, his company as listed as 57,400. All those listed of the companies of Judah by their companies were 186,400. They shall set out first on the march. Okay, so God is setting out the order that the people would, would march in. He's setting out um, the, the place where they would camp around the tent of meeting, um, which would be where the ark of God would be held, because it's that important. Okay, and Judah is listed first because he is the one that is um, over the other tribes. God has appointed him as like the oldest because of how Reuben fell for sleeping with his stepmom and because of the Levites being the priests and them having to take care of the tent of meeting and then um we'll go on and I'm sure maybe we'll catch it so let's go on verse 10 on the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben by their companies the chief of the people of Reuben being Eliezer the son of Shadur his company is listed as being 46,500 and those to camp next to him shall be the tribe of Simeon the chief of the people of Simeon being Shemuel the son of Zerashida his company is listed as being 59,300 and then the tribe of Gad the chief of the people of Gad being Elisaph, the son of Ruel, his company as listed as 45,650. All those listed of the camp of Reuben by their companies were 151,450, and they all, and they shall set out second. Now, under Reuben falls Simeon and uh, Gad. Now, Reuben was actually the oldest. Simeon and Levi were the next, second and third. But Levi would be with the tent of meeting, and Simeon, because of what Simeon and Levi did um, when their sister Dinah was raped by um, that town, the guy that was in the town, I can't remember his name, Shechem, I think, it was Shechem, and um, they killed all the men of Shechem, yeah. So they lost their spots as being head of the household and then so that's why it fell to Judah and Judah had a change of heart if you remember um, 
he was willing to lay down his life that Benjamin wouldn't be um, taken into slavery in Egypt by Joseph when he was testing them. So Judah had a change of heart. Judah was willing to lay down his life, and that made Judah the head of the household, the, the oldest, the son with the oldest blessing. So then the tent of meeting shall set out with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camps as they camp, so they shall set out each in position standard by standard. And the, t um, the camp of the Levites would be with the tent of meeting because they were the ones that would take care of it as the priests. Okay, so on the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim by their companies, the chief of the people of Ephraim being Elishama, the son of Amud, his company as listed being 40,500. And next him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, the chief of the people of Manasseh being Gamil, the son of Pedazur, his company is listed as 32,200. And then the tribe of Benjamin, the chief of the people of Benjamin being Abadan, the son of Gideon, his company is listed as 35,400. All those listed of the camp of Ephraim by their companies were 108,100. They shall set out third on the march. Now, Ephraim and Manasseh were Joseph's sons. Manasseh was actually the older and Ephraim the younger, but when uh, Joseph presented them to Jacob to be blessed, Jacob switched his hands. He was blind. So Joseph switched him back, saying, no, you got it wrong. And Joseph said, Jacob said, no, I got it right. The younger will rule over the older. And so Ephraim was over Manasseh. And um, Benjamin was the youngest son of the 12 tribes of Israel, and he's falling under their covering as well. So on the north side shall be the standard of the camp of Dan by their companies. The chief of the people of Dan being Hazer, the son of Amishadai, his company is listed as 62,700. And those to camp next to him shall be the tribe of Asher, the chief of the people of Asher being Pajil, the son of Ochran. His company is listed as 41,500. And then the tribe of Naphtali, the chief of the people of Naphtali being Ahira, the son of Enon. His company is listed as 53,400. All those listed at the camp of Dan were 157,600. They shall set out last, standard by standard. These are the people of Israel as listed by their father's houses. All those listed in the camps by their companies were 603,550. But the Levites were not listed among the people of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses because they didn't share in the inheritance of the land. They were the ones taking care of the temple tabernacle of meeting. Thus did the people of Israel according to all the Lord commanded Moses, so they camped by their standards, and so they set out, each one in his clan, according to his father's house. So now we see the sons of Aaron. These are the generations of Aaron and Moses at the time when the Lord spoke with Moses on Mount Sinai. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed priests whom he ordained to serve as priests. But Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. So Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests in the lifetime of Aaron their father. And that was when they died for offering that unauthorized fire, and Aaron wasn't allowed to mourn for them because they did what was wrong in the sight of God. So you can't mourn for someone that dies for doing what's wrong. It's a hard situation. And again, you know, God provides what you need in that situation. You know, So now we see the duties of the Levites. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near and set them before Aaron the priest that they may minister to him. They shall keep guard over him and over the whole congregation before the tent of meeting as they minister at the tabernacle. They shall guard all the furnishings of the tent of meeting and keep guard over the people of Israel as they minister at the tabernacle. And you shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They are wholly given to him from among the people of Israel. And you shall appoint Aaron and his sons and they shall guard their priesthood. But if any outsider comes near, he shall be put to death. Um, Levi was given the opportunity to um, serve 
there in the temple because they stepped up and said that they would follow after Moses no matter what. So because they were willing to step up and stand up for what they believe, God allowed them to be the priests of the tabernacle. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Behold, I have taken the Levites from among the people of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens the womb among the people of Israel. The Levites shall be mine, for all the firstborn are mine. On the day that I struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I consecrated for my own all the firstborn in Israel, both of man and of beast. They shall be mine, I am the Lord. So when they were in Egypt, if you remember, um, the angel of death passed over Israel because they had put the blood on the doorpost and um, the firstborn of Egypt instead were struck down dead. Well, God is saying that instead of uh, requiring their lives, they were consecrated, all the firstborn of Israel, for God. Now, instead of actually keeping the firstborn of everything of Israel, he just took the tribe of Levi. So the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, List the sons of Levi by father's houses and by clans. Every male from a month old and upward you shall list. So Moses listed them according to the word of the Lord as he was commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon and Kohath and Merari. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon by their clans, Libni and Shimai. And the sons of Kohath by their clans, Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uziel. And the sons of Merari by their clans, Mali and Mushai. These are the clans of the Levites by their fathers' houses. To Gershon belonged the clan of the Libnites and the clan of the Shimeites. These were the clans of the Gershonites. Their listing, according to the number of all the males from a month old and upward, was 7,500. Now the footnote says, in Hebrew, their listing was. So, their listing was... 7,500. The clans of the Gershonites were to camp behind the tabernacle on the west with Eliphath, the son of Lael, as chief of the father's house of the Gershonites. And the guard duty of the sons of the Gershon in the tent of meeting involved the tabernacle, the tent with its covering, the screen for the entrance of the tent of meeting, the hangings of the court, the screen for the door of the court that is around the tabernacle, and the altar and its courts, all the service connected with these. So, God was very specific in breaking down the jobs of each of the Levites to be able to um, minister in the, temper, in the tabernacle. So it wasn't like a question as to what am I supposed to do here. So to Koath belonged the clan of the Amorites and the clan of the Israelites and the clan of the Hebronites and the clan of the Uzielites. These are the clans of the Koathites. According to the number of all the males from a month old and upward were 8,600, keeping guard over the sanctuary. The clans of the sons of Koath were to camp on the south side of the tabernacle with Elizabeth and the Elizabeth, the son of Uziel, as chief of the father's houses of the clans of the Koathites. And their guard duty involved the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the vessel of the sanctuary with which the priests minister, and the screen, all the service connected with these. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief, was to be chief over the chiefs of the Levites and to have oversight of those who kept guard over the sanctuary. So to Merari belonged the clan of the Malathites and the clan of the Mushites. These are the clans of Merari. Their listing, according to the number of all the males from a month old and upward, was 6,200. And the chief of the house of the, uh, the father's house of the clans of Merari was Zeriel, the son of Abihail. They were to camp on the north side of the tabernacle, and the appointed guard duty of the sons of Merari involved the frames of the tabernacle, the bars, the pillars, the bases, and all their accessories. All the service connected with these. Also the pillars around the court with their bases and pegs and cords. Those who were to camp before the tabernacle in the east before the tent of meeting toward the sunrise were Moses and Aaron and his sons, guarding the sanctuary itself to protect the people of Israel. And the footnote says to guard, to guard the people of Israel. And any outsider who came near was to be put to death. All those listed among the Levites whom Moses and Aaron listed at the commandment of the Lord by clans, all the males from a month old and upward were 22,000. So, now we see the redemption of the firstborn. 
And the Lord said to Moses, list all the firstborn males of the people of Israel from a month old and upward, taking the number of their names, and you shall take the Levites for me. I am the Lord. Instead of all the firstborn among the people of Israel and the cattle and the Levites, instead of all the firstborn among the cattle of the people of Israel. So Moses listed all the firstborn among the people of Israel as the Lord commanded him and all the firstborn males according to the number of the names from a month old and upward was listed at 22,273. And if you can remember, the number of the Levites was 22,000. So it was just almost exact. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the people of Israel and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle. The Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. And as the redemption price for the 273 of the firstborn of the people of Israel over and above the number of the male Levites, you shall take five shekels. And um, the footnote says the shekel is about two fifths of an ounce or 11 grams per head. You shall take them according to the shekel of the sanctuary, the shekel of 20 guras, which the footnote says a gura is about 1 50th of, or 0.6 grams, and give the money to Aaron and his sons as the redemption price for those who are over. So Moses took the redemption money from those who were over and above those redeemed by the Levites. From the firstborn of the people of Israel, he took the money, 1,365 1, shekels, by the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the redemption money to Aaron and his sons, according to the word of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. They did according to the word of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. It's so important that we are in line and right with God. And God takes it very seriously. And God is exact down to the number, which is always an awesome and amazing thing because numbers and people and names matter to God. It's not just whatever thing. God is in the numbers. He is in the exactness. He's in the names. He is precise. Nothing is haphazard and accidental with God, which is an awesome thing. So that was our Old Testament reading. So our New Testament reading is Mark eleven twenty seven 27 through 12, 17. And we see the authority of Jesus is challenged. So, and they came again to Jerusalem. And we don't know who the they is. So Mark eleven twenty six. let's find out who the they is. And you might say, why is that important? Why do we need to know that? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't like being in the middle of a story. Like, I don't like not knowing what's going on. Mark 11. So we see um, in the beginning of Mark 11, Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. They approached Jerusalem, came to Beth, uh, Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples. So this is um, when the people are laying down their cloaks and, and palm branches and honoring Jesus as the blessed king. Uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Um, he curses the fig tree and clears out the temple courts once he gets into Jerusalem um, because the fig tree had no fruit and the temple was full of those money changers that were swindling the people, so he got them all out of there. Now, right after that, after he had done, he, uh, he, after he was done um, cursing the fig tree, and clearing out the temple, that's where we pick up with him. They um, came again to Jerusalem, and as they were walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him, and they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? And Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question, answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Because Jesus was forever answering a question with a question. And if you couldn't answer Jesus's question, he wouldn't answer your question. And um, it was always to try and trap Jesus. That's why he always answered their questions with questions. So was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? Answer me. And they discussed it with one another saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, well, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from man, they were afraid of the people for they all held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. You know, if you're not going to stand for what you believe, Jesus isn't going to stand for you. 
um, it's so important that we choose a side. You're either for God or against God. You're only going to stand accountable for what you do with the name of Jesus Christ. And they did not want to say what they wanted to do with the name of Jesus Christ. So God would not stand for them. Jesus would not give them an answer. And I love that because it shows us that the importance of being for or against God. So next chapter, 12, chapter 12 of Mark, the parable of the tenants. So he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. Now when the season came, he sent a servant and the footnote says a bond servant. So he said a bond servant. Now a bond servant was someone that was not a slave. They, um, guaranteed a bond, uh, master guaranteed a bond to them. They were bonded to their master um, for a period of time and then they were free. So a bond servant was not a slave. It was someone who willingly and wanted to be there. So he sent a servant or a bond servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard because it was his, right? And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty handed. Again, he sent them another servant. They struck him on the head, treated him shamefully, and he sent another, and him they killed. Finally, he sent him to them. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. Oh, and so with many other. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. And he sent another, and him they killed, and so with many others. Some of them they beat, and some of them they killed. So these tenants that he put on his own land to work it and to grow his crops were scandalous and they weren't honoring his servants. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. I don't know what they were thinking. Why would the guy give him the inheritance when they killed his son? I don't know. And they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And the footnote says, um, the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. So according to this parable, God is the master. He created the vineyard and put tenants in it. The tenants are the Israelites. He gave them the word of God. He gave them um, his presence. And he put prophets and teachers of the law in place so that they would know his word. Yet they rejected the prophets and they rejected the teachings of God because they didn't realize who Jesus Christ was. And God sent his only beloved son to them and they were going to kill him. And he is going to take the blessing of the vineyard, the blessing of the word of God and give it to others, which is what happened when Jesus Christ died. The gospel was spread to all nations, to all people. He is the stone, Jesus Christ, the stone that the builders rejected. The builders are Israel. And he has become the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone, the, the headstone, the most important stone in the building. That's Jesus Christ. And they were seeking to arrest him, but feared the people, they being the, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. So they understood what he was saying. So they left him and went away they couldn't do anything about it so now paying taxes to Caesar so they sent him they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talk and they came and said to him teacher we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion for you are not swayed by appearances and the footnote says you do not look at people's faces but truly teach the way of God is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, because they weren't asking if they should pay taxes, like to really wonder or know the answer. 
they were hoping that he would say, no, don't pay taxes to Caesar, and then they would be able to get him as uh, being someone against the kingdom, right? Against Caesar, against the Romans. But this is his answer. But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius. And the footnote says, a denarius was a day's wage for a laborer. And let me look at it. And they brought one. And he said to them, whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus said to them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Of course, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. It's Caesar's coin. Give, give the coins to Caesar. But give the things to God the things that are God's. And they were not. They were not giving to God the things that were God's, which was their their soul, their lives, their their true belief in Jesus Christ, they were not. They were rejecting the Son of God, so they were not giving to God what was God's. Yeah, not a good place to be. So now we're in Psalms 47. God is king over all the earth, and it is to the choir master a psalm of the sons of Korah. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. Selah. Think about it. Pause. Shout to God. He is great over all the earth. He subdues and he is our heritage, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. We are those that he loves. We are his pride. We are the ones that he cares for. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. And the footnote says, a masquil, which is a musical term. So God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. That's a good place to be, highly exalting God. So Proverbs 10, 24 to 25. What the wicked dreads will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the tempts when the tempest passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous is established forever. And that is like a reference to um, the foolish man builds his house upon the sand and the wise man builds his house upon the rock. So when the rains came down and the floods came up and the foolish man's um, house passed away, but the one that was built on the rock stood firm. So that's an Old Testament, but it refers to what was said in the New Testament. So I hope that um, the readings for today blessed you. I hope that you were able to enjoy and get into God's word. And I hope that you would continue to get into God's word as um, he touches your heart. And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. It would be early. Hopefully that's going to happen. So thank you so much for joining in and God bless. Take care.